do in favor of the adoption of amendment number four as proposed by the planning board for the Hampton zoning ordinance as follows. Amend article two, district section 2.1 zoning map to change portions of the business, industrial, professional office, residential, and residence A zoning districts to three new town center zoning districts, town center south, town center historic, and town center north. The town center districts would be set forth in new section 2.8 town center district under article two as separate districts, each with distinct zoning regulations for permitted uses, conditional uses, dimensional requirements, and parking, building, and sign regulations. Recommended by the planning board. Is there a motion to open discussion on article five? Moved by Mr. Olson, second by Mr. McNamara. Mr. Olson, as chair of the planning board, would you like to be heard on article five? Um, Article 5, as we've proposed it, the Planning Board uh, seeks to create these three new town center zones, each with their own appropriate distinct zoning regulations related to the types of use, dimensional requirements, parking, building, and signage um, specific to that zone. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Nyan. John Nyan. To Walnut Avenue in Hampton. Uh, on this warrant article, I speak to you uh, as a uh, representative of Experience Hampton, which is an organization here in town uh, made up of uh, private residents and business community. On this warrant article, since this has a major impact on the business community in the downtown ha area of Hampton, um, Experience Hampton was invited to participate on a uh, a committee set up by the planning board a little under a year ago, I believe it was. And during that whole period of time, uh, we had representation uh, of the business community and also private citizens uh, providing input uh, onto this warrant article. Um, I believe the planning board worked diligently uh, on this. Uh, they took into consideration a number of issues. Uh, they actually reached out to the business community downtown. And that, to, to me, was a very, very positive step to show that the business community that we are a business-friendly community and not a non-business-friendly community. I believe that there, in the future, could be some work. Uh, but like anything, this, I believe, is a great start. And so Experience Hampton and its members support this Warren article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nine. Mr. Moody. Mr. Moody. Art Moody, <clears throat> it's tough to be against things, but I didn't propose this stuff. <clears throat> I'd like to make a point of order, which I should have on Article 3, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, it's my contention that this article, which does not contain written description of the district to be rezoned, is completely un illegal and the planning board had no authority to put this on the ballot because it violates the zoning ordinances adopted by a town meeting as proposed by the planning board in 1981. Quote, zoning ordinance section 2.1.3, the zoning map is intended for reference only. Final determination as to the zone lines being reference to the written descriptions of said, said boundaries in effect prior to the adoption of said map together with any written description of other or other amendment adopted subsequent thereof. They tried a zoning map to be the delineation of zones. Even a huge map at 30, 40 feet was a line in the small lots that we have, you couldn't tell where the line was. So they went back to written descriptions. Everything since the 81, including the zoning the planning board articles, like the one they did in 07, have been written descriptions. But these two, Article 3 and 5, are done by a map with no written descriptions. In fact, 
the map isn't even in. The colored map isn't even in the required packet left at the library, if you can find it, you don't have to ask for it. There's no indication at the library where the legal ad said the descriptions were just outlining these two districts. And for that matter, Mr. Moderator, I, I contend that this is illegally on the warrant and the ballot. If you rule on that, I'll continue. I'm uh, limited, Mr. Moody, and directed by state statute that everything appears on the, that's on the warrant today must move forward to March 11. Your remarks are noted by the town clerk. You've raised the issue that these are illegal, defective, because they don't um, include uh, descriptions uh, of the zones and make reference to the maps. But we can't, as a body, take this off. I can't, as a moderator, nullify it. So you've brought it to the town's attention formally this morning, and it's in the minutes of the meeting. And um, that's uh, the best that we can do for um, your concern. But Article 5 is going to appear. It's also one of those articles we can't amend. Uh, there have been superior court cases where the town, I believe it uh, was the town of Exeter at one time, tried to take an article completely off. It might have been the Exeter School District, and the, and the superior court said you can't do that. So this is going to move forward. It may be, if you're correct, of no uh, effect. The voters may not approve it. All that waits to March 11th and beyond. Okay. I, 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 I also resent the fact that in the last two or three years, we haven't had full the full change in our law in the selectman's warrant, but we have the same gist that's going to be on the ballot. So there's no <clears throat> paper trail. There's no record of a change in law. Can you imagine Congress or the State House in Concord <laughs> not printing the law in their official documents? The only thing that gets published is a town report, but you won't see the full change in the ordinance. Uh, as far as this re redistricting, Along Route 1, you heard one of the business owners <coughs> not being invited, and they drew a line between his two lots, his two businesses. They went out of their way to draw, <laughs> draw a lot to separate them, one in one district and one in another district. Uh, now, his, his, he would, could challenge and ask for a two-thirds vote, but you can't, because the way they did it, they left open space between the new zone and the adjacent zone to the east. It's, 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 you, you have to read the statue on who the 20% of the property owners that can petition to ask for a two-thirds vote on these things. But you can't determine that from the way they did this. Completely off the wall. Uh, uh, one other thing, they've changed residence A to this business zone, Park Avenue, Drakeside Road, unprecedented going from residence A to business instead of the other way around. They, have, they will allow, if this passes, to have used car dealers that we outlawed many years ago from Rice Terrace South to Park Avenue. They will be permitted in the south district of this tri trio from Dunkin' Donuts south to Park Avenue. Uh, and we tried to get away from that, having used car lots with its pennants and balloons and things. Uh, it, it is really a mishmash. Uh, we're allowing single family residents in part of these zones. We don't allow that in the business zone now that we're taking away from these zones. Uh, Single-family residents tend to have more complaints about business activity uh, because they're standalone dwelling unit. Uh, I'm opposed to this, and I will hope that uh, the voters agree. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. We elect a planning board to enforce current zoning regulations and make recommendations that are needed for the town to grow in the future in an orderly manner. We often hear complaints 
about the fact that everything is grandfathered uh, or we need an exception for everything and therefore we have an overworked uh, ZBA. The reason we have so many people going to the ZBA is that we don't have enough standardized uh, zoning regulations so that things can comply with it. This regulation and all of these items right here are items that have been put forth by people elected for that purpose, not people who, come, who, are, who can come here and take pot shots at it, but people who are elected for the purpose of studying our zoning ordinances and coming up with common sense, practical methods for improving them to accommodate the future growth of the town of Hampton. We can't go back to etching things in stone with chisels. We can't go back to handwriting every single thing that happens. Today's age of computerization gives us the capability to get far, far, far more accurate in our descriptions of lot lines than we were ever able to do in the past. In recognition of this, during the last session, the state legislature listened to a, a hearing, had work sessions, executive sessions, and then the whole House and then the whole Senate did the same thing to pass a rule that would make it easier for the voters to understand these articles. I think those who have lived here in the town of Hampton for more than a year or two will agree that a few years ago we had some warrant, ar some warrant articles that were pages and pages long that did nothing but take up time and people never read them. It turned them off. Now what we're trying to do is allow people to know the sense of that article and if they want to go in and look at the details, it must be posted. Many people are more graphically oriented than word oriented and so they are able to do that. And the objections that this is illegal, that's preposterous. You know, that's, that's grabbing for straws. This thing is very legal, it is an accommodation to future growth and it's something that we need to do if we're not going to go back and revert to the Stone Age. Let's support the articles that are put forth by the people we elected to do this job and not the people who want to come here and take pot shots at it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. Jones. Ms. Wilson. Yeah, Mr. Jones, and then we'll wrap up with Ms. Uh, Wilson. We just heard the previous presenter, our state representative, Fred Rice, speak to absurdities, so I wanted to speak to the absurdities that we just heard. We just heard that the state legislature, never abusing us, never inducing us to subsidize their activities here in their state park. No, no, the great state legislature, never abusive of our rights. No, 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 no. They, in their infinite, and I do mean infinite wisdom, have determined, yes, there is a point, in their infinite wisdom have said that it's easier for the public to remain ignorant that we shouldn't put the law on the ballot. This is wise, yes, this way the, the voter is easier to make a decision because he's ignorant as to what the law says. And no, State Representative Rice, we are not taking pot shots to an elected body. I remind you, if you wish to read the state laws, which I don't think you do it often enough, this is a legislative body right here. This is the legislature of the town. And he's advocating that this legislature not read the law. Can anything be more absurd than that? Now on this Article 5 in particular, we've heard at the planning board that there have been, what, flaws? And then they say, well, it's okay to do the flaws because, well, nothing's perfect. Well, I don't think anyone's asking for perfection, but I think we ought to correct flaws when they're identified and not simply ignore them. None other than our town attorney send, sends a confidential letter indicating the flaws. But are we allowed to know what those flaws are? No, no, no. It's a secret. It's a confidential letter. We, the legislative body, the town meeting in this session, and the one where we sometimes call an election, but it's actually the second session of this town legislature, are told, no, no, you are not allowed to know the flaws. You're not allowed to readily read the law. You are expected to be ignorant, conform, and vote yes. 
because we have a planning board that says, yes, the flaws are good. Vote no. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Wilsey. Ladies and gentlemen, this article never, never should have been placed on the warrant. This is the result of a $41,000 grant to an individual who does not live in this town. The studying took place up to the last minute and then an article was scrambled together. Yes, the planning board works hard. Yes, the planning board is a group of volunteers. But the, all, the planning board also should be entitled to have adequate counsel from a full-time paid planner and putting this article or any other article together. This article was uh, challenged first, first draft by myself on the planning board. The building inspector, town council, and the town manager had all gone through it and made a number of corrections. But none of that solves the ultimate problem. Mr. Moody referred briefly to the problem with the overlapping of the zones. Tom Fortin owns two properties on the west side of Route 1. His two properties are in two different zones, one in the center district and one in the north district. And when he said to the planning board, what am I to do? What if I want to sell my planning board, oh, my, my property? They said, well, you know, whatever. If we pass this article, you're stuck with it for at least a year. You can't do anything to remedy it until next year's warrant. This is a dangerous article. It is a sloppy article. It is a poorly put together article and it will have unintended consequences that property owners along Route 1 and on the side streets have no idea what problem it's going to cause for them. And I plead with you to vote no. This isn't a matter of making the center of town look pretty. It's what my mother used to call pie in the sky. It's a very bad, very flawed article. Please vote no. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. We're going to move on to Article 6.